Salve, citizen, and welcome to the Sitra Podcast Channel. I am your host, Ariskini Jim, and we've got some more ancient wargaming content for you. First of all, we are joined by our friend John Sowerby, and we're also joined by Jim Dundorf, who helps run things here at Dust Creek House, home of the South Florida Miniature Gaming Club. So the game that we're looking at is some more Debellus Antiquitatis, or DBA for short, and we've got John's Sulicids there on the left versus Jim's Imperial, I'm sorry, Republic Romans over there on the right. So the Sulicids were an empire in Asia. They're one of the successor states of Alexander. Uh, they sort of controlled areas at their height, uh, pretty much from Syria all the way to Afghanistan, although by the time this period comes around, They've lost most of that territory. They've gotten into some conflicts with the Parthians and so on and so forth. Nevertheless, there was some conflict between them and the Romans. They had a big war in the 2nd century BCE. But they kind of lasted, uh, especially in Syria, for as late as maybe Pompey Magnus could have had a battle with them, uh, again, in Syria. So they kind of have a mixed bag. We see a war elephant. We have a scythe chariot. We see pikemen. We have knights. We have light infantry there on John's uh, right wing. You kind of determine which side is attacking and which side is the more aggressive. Now, some factions are more aggressive than others. Here, we're just going to see Jim's uh, Romans are the much more aggressive faction. Uh, then there's a dice mechanic on top of that. Whoever winds up being the attacker gets to decide what direction that the attack is coming in at. Whoever's the defender gets to set up the terrain subject to some dice mechanics. So we're going to go ahead and start off here. John is rolling his orders dice. He's on defense. He's managed to set up some of the terrain to his liking. And then whichever way the table is set up, i.e. which way the attackers are coming in, is determined by the attacker. Again, and that's Jim with his Romans. So John has rolled a four for his first orders dice. That gives him uh, four orders that he can move his army with. It's going to be pretty easy at first because uh, what DBA allows you to do is to move more of your forces that are in line, sort of um, flank to flank, base to base contact with a single order. That's easy to do at first, not so much later. Also that war elephant that we see there, that's gonna cost two orders to move from here on out. Same with that uh, scythe chariot. Meanwhile, Jim rolls a six for his first order dice. So, again, six order dice, lucky roll. By the way, I love the Roman numerals on that dice. Very appropriate. He's got six orders, and his army is still all in line. So he's going to get to do pretty much whatever he wants on this first turn. So the first thing he's going to do, he's going to move the cavalry there on his left. He's going to extend his line a little bit. He's going to engage that light infantry uh, on John's wing uh, there in that little arable farm field there, and we're going to see what happens. That's probably not going to go very well for the light infantry, uh, to be honest. Nevertheless, you don't want to detach your cavalry too far from your main body without some infantry support. So up comes some Roman spears. We'll see how that goes. So he's counting his orders. That's four so far. And he's probably going to use his last orders to move forward this main line. Okay, he's going to lead off with some skirmishers first. And uh, then we're going to see what he does with the rest of his force. He's got one order left. And yeah, he's gone ahead and he's moved forward the rest of his line. So now we're, uh, we're beginning turn two here. Um, we do see uh, what Jim's going to do here, I believe. Yeah, here he goes. He's going to measure what that little block does is that it measures what's called zone of control. So once you get within zone of control of an enemy force, that enemy force does not get to disengage, just turn around and run away. So once the enemy gets close enough, um, it becomes more difficult to disengage. The armies start to get locked up with each other even before they come within base-to-base -base contact. Meanwhile, that scythe chariot uh, has been detached way off there on the uh, Sulicid left. And I'm not sure what he's going to do. He may be trying to get around the Roman wing, maybe get out their camp or something. I don't know. Um, but again, that, that uh, the chariot costs two orders to move, especially since it's detached from the main line. John's not really going to be able to move it uh, with his main force. So it's an expensive unit at this point, order-wise, uh, but pretty powerful. If it works, it's one of those all-or-nothing units, along with, those, uh, that, that, with that war elephant. That's one of those units that 
in the wrong circumstances can be just as deadly to your own forces as well as the enemy. So you don't want that um, scythe chariot to break and flee and go back uh, through your own force. So on this turn, uh, John's got four orders. He leads off with his uh, chariot. He is, yep, kind of like we uh, suspected. It did cost him two orders points, but he is going to hit the Roman extreme wing there, up there on uh, the Roman right wing. All right, so hopefully he's not setting them in there by himself. Okay, cool, he is setting up some infantry, infantry to support the chariot. He's now down to one order. He's, as you see, he's got a lot of his army left. Good news, a lot of his army is still in line, so he can move forward a big chunk of them and engage the main body of the Roman center. Unfortunately, that uh, war elephant, I don't think is gonna be able to get into it. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna be his order dice. So once the, the two sides have moved and they've sort of locked up, you start resolving combats on a unit by unit basis. So different units have different uh, attack values. You get various bonuses or penalties based on uh, primarily on whether or not you're flanked or not. Like we see here, if you beat the enemy roll, John has beat the Roman roll. You know, that unit has lost the fight and it, it uh, results in, a, in a, a kind of a pushback like we see here. To my understanding, if you double the enemy's roll, that unit is eliminated. And depending on the scenario and how big the game is, it's usually about, to my understanding, four units eliminated resolves the game. Now here, this fight is going to get a little complicated because the Roman line we see there on the right-hand side is longer than the Sulacid line, so he does get some bonuses. Uh, Jim has won the roll partly because of those bonuses, so he's going to get pushed back. Whether or not the enemy presses forward depends on the type of unit, how disciplined it is, and so on. So here they are counting up another section of the line. You're going to see who's flanked and who isn't. They're going to add up their total number along with their penalties. And uh, a lot of guys are rolling ones. Um, this is the third Roman combat one of the game pretty much in a row. However, with proper use of tactics and careful management of modifiers, even with bad die rolls, you can still win these little individual combats. Now you see here very clearly, especially on the Sulacid side, where the line starts to break up. He no longer has that cohesive line, you know, from flank to flank that he can move with a single order. Meanwhile, the Roman cavalry has hit the light forces. Oh, a whole unit's been eliminated. Oh man. And uh, yeah, that's not good at all. Okay, so yeah, Roman cavalry has now hit the light infantry on the Sulacid uh, right flank in open ground, they kind of charged out of that, uh, out of those crops. And then on top of that, Jim rolled a natural six. So yeah, that's gonna be two of them. Uh, the second one, they got worse because by the time that first one got knocked out with the six, that second one was flanked and then they became even in more dire straits. And uh, that's halfway to deciding the game already. Pretty much the whole Sulacid wing has been blown clean off their force. Now the one bad thing for the Romans, or the things he has to be careful of here, is that Roman cavalry is pretty far away. He may not be in command. Let's see how things go on the other flank with this scythe chariot here. Now there is an infantry skirmish on the side of the side chariot. So let's see how this resolves. Oh, wow, check it out. All right, so um, we thought those chariots were pretty much toast because, okay, they, they are flanked by Romans, you see there. However, those Romans are also engaged with other Sulacids. However, those Sulacids are in turn flanked as well. So that little side battle there on the uh, Sulacid left wing is really getting kind of complicated. Yeah, so as you see there, the Romans had that Sulacid unit completely pinned on the side. So when the unit in front scored a push, it actually became an elimination because again, they were locked in place by the unit on the flank and that winds up being an elimination. So, boom, right there, we already see three Sulacid units knocked out. I hate to say it, but I think John's already losing this game pretty bad. Now we come back to some, uh, with the flanks resolved, we have some uh, pretty heavy combat here in the center. No one's eliminated yet though, however, the Sulacids are giving ground. 
Okay, we're starting turn three. John's got four orders. So far we've got one Roman unit eliminated. And again, three Seleucid units eliminated. So one more Seleucid unit eliminated, that's gonna be game. Nevertheless, oh, check it out. The Seleucid chariot has just hit the Roman camp. Sort of the uh, squishy underbelly of his force there. Is it gonna turn the game? It might not, but it may wind up forcing a draw on points. Or again, in a tournament setting, you get points not only for winning the game, but for every unit eliminated, for any every king or general captured, or for taking out the enemy camp. So even if you've lost the game in these DBA tournaments, you can still do well by racking up points. And then at the end of the tournament, I think it's, it's calculated by a total number of points that you've won, maybe not necessarily strict wins and losses. So one thing that we do see here with the Seleucid Force, that War Elephant is kind of left behind, that other force way back in the backfield is kind of left behind. These units sort of get detached. And because the, unit, the, because the army's line has more or less broken up and management of orders becomes a, a really you know, constraining factor, you wind up with some very tough choices and it becomes hard. Uh, units get detached and they never really join the fight. That does make a certain amount of psychological sense though. If you get left behind, the rest of the army goes in and you see that line just dissolve into a tornado of bone and blood, you're not gonna be terribly motivated to jump into the middle of that. So over here, we have again, some more fighting here in the center, uh, here on turn three. Sulacids continue to hold on by getting pushed and not being eliminated. Again, they can only afford to lose one more unit. Speaking of which, there it goes. Okay, now the game is kind of decided. They're gonna go ahead and finish the turn. A couple things can happen. Number one, John could conceivably, mathematically, knock out three Roman units and force a draw. Or again, you can score points and determine a margin of victory. And for, again, for a tournament setting, that could be really, really important. Uh, if you lose a bunch of games, but you lose them all by one point, you can actually still come out on top. All right, so this is a little swirl in the middle here where units are literally flanking each other. This may determine what's going on. Okay, so John did get a better roll, but as we count up the factors and the modifiers, it's not enough to actually eliminate any Roman units. It will just be a push that is now technically the end of the game. That was pretty much his only chance to force a draw there. Cause even if he wipes out the Roman camp, that's only gonna be like another, it looks like two units, I believe. So even if he wipes out this camp, uh, Jim's Romans will still win. Meanwhile, he rolls a six. So, yep, that's gonna be uh, the camp pretty much uh, pushed off the table, effectively destroyed. He, uh, because that's a momentum unit, an impetus unit, obviously it's cavalry and uh, you know, drawing a chariot. He comes into the camp, takes the camp, and that's pretty much, uh, there you go. That's the end of the game. Okay, so we hope you enjoyed this quick game of DBA. Please remember to like and subscribe, and we'll be in touch very soon.